Hey, 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 how's it going everyone? We're here with the very first SH Figurats Elden Ring release. And now this is the Festering Fingerprint Vike, who also comes with his War Spear, as well as his Frenzy Flame effect, which looks really, really nice. I can't wait to check that out while attached to his weapon. Uh, now, I haven't actually played this game myself, so please do let me know in the comments below if you feel like this figure release lives up to the NPC himself from the game um, but definitely from my first impression so far this is actually a lot nicer than I expected now I've been wanting a really cool kind of medieval style character just for a background character to mix and match with some photos and so forth uh, so yeah definitely excited to check this guy out because he even if you're not into the game Elden Ring I feel like it's a really cool looking kind of generic character even if you do have no affiliation or you know, if you have no idea who a Festering Fingerprint Vike is, I think this is still going to be a great release for any collector. Uh, but yeah, on the back here, if you are new, we do have a usual selection of images showcasing the figure itself. Though surprisingly, no promo photos showing that flame effect, uh, which, is a kind of which is kind of surprising since it looks so badass. Now on to the front here. If you are picking up online, keep an eye out for the Tamashii quality seal sticker there. That is definitely one of the quick, easy ways to check a legit figure or not. Uh, but yeah, that is the overall package design, which is pretty standard these days, and it looks really nice with that green colour. So, let's just pop him out of the box, and we'll get a closer look at what he does come with. So, out of the box here, we can see the packaging clearly, and the pollen is so big, it comes in a second package just behind there. And this is looking nice, so we'll get a closer look at that shortly. Uh, but for the main packaging here, we have the Festering Fingerprint Vike himself in the centre, along with that flame effect. Uh, it's definitely looking really nice, you can already see different tones of orange and yellow there. Now for the hands, we have three additional pairs of hands. Um, he's got the kind of loose grip one, and then he has two pairs which are for holding the pole arm. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see at the moment, uh, but basically you've got one pair which is kind of a flat hand like this with a hole, and the other one is a bit more of an angle. Uh, so I guess it depends on which way you want to hold the uh, war spear here. Um, and you can just switch and match them around to get a more natural pose, which is actually quite nice. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, pretty simple in terms of the actual accessories it does come with, but this is very detailed, and same with the spear. Uh, so these are looking really nice so far. Uh, so yeah, let's pop them out of the actual packaging so we can get a close look at his overall finish and de well, design details. Okay, so we've got him out of a box there, and we can get a close look at that finish, but before we jump into the man himself, or Vike himself, let's take a look at this weapon. Man, check out the detail. Um, we've got the nice red colour coming through for that fire. Oh, could even be blood if he's been uh, stabbing a few people there. Um, but we also have some nice weathering effects on the weapon itself to show those scorched marks from the flames. Now, the flame effect itself, which we have right here, um, I believe this just slots in like so. Might depend on which way, I think that's a little bit tight, but uh, which way around, so I think maybe like this, yeah there we go, so that slots in like so, and just check that out, it's definitely looking like it's on fire, ready to scorch his enemies down, um, definitely very top heavy, that is going to be one problem which I do see, and we do get a bit of flex in the pole arm, so you'll need to have a I guess a uh, grip at the very top there, and then one of the end to kind of stabilize, but I think that's going to be one issue with this figure, like anything that has a really long, top heavy item, it'll be a bit hard to balance, but the actual finish itself, uh, top notch there, and you can even see the uh, twisted wrought iron, I guess it's wrought iron, or at least whatever material a uh, hilt here is made out of on a spear, you can see it's got a nice twisted look which looks beautiful. And we have more of those scorch marks coming all the way down through the whole handle area. Now since we already had a quick look at the five, we'll have another little look. And we can see we've got the nice brighter orange areas and the overall yellow flame. And the detailing and look for this is beautiful. Uh, it really makes me think, sorry if you're not a Dragon Ball fan, but for a special beam cannon fire effect for Piccolo eventually, something along these lines would be absolutely badass. Uh, so having that nice twisted uh, flames wrapping around each other is looking really, really nice. Uh, a really cool effect. I can definitely see why the other accessories in this figure was a bit limited. So I'm guessing something like this would probably raise the cost quite a bit. So now jumping into the detail for the figure itself, I think the first impression when you open it up is just kind of a little bit of 
or actually um, it's actually really impressive the detailing and colouring we have on this figure. Most figure arts are a lot more simplistic in their finish but as soon as you look at this you can see kind of nice slight blue colours, we've got a bit more of a earthy grey in the muddled chainmail look of them. It's fully detailed and same with his uh, helmet here which has kind of been melted off, it's got that uh, really high blue colour. Same with the other melted area on his chest and then we've got the different texture in the chainmail and armour going all the way down through his leg. And then down to his shoes which is a little bit more of a subtle uh, muddy type colour. Uh, looking like the leather and same with the wraps around the side here and then with his belt um, so not belt I guess a waist bag or a pouch uh, so there's so many different colours a little bit of subtleties going on and even with his torn cape here we've got the main colour with some texture down to a lighter colour on the frayed tips of it um, and same with the inner armour here or I guess the uh, padding it would be or leather it has that other um, matted uh, neutral colouring there so the amount of I guess detailing and all the little bit colours on this really makes this figure pop and it even has like the shine here on the armour there so it does look like it could be metal uh, so I've done a fantastic job of this and same for all the little sculpting details on the armour everywhere you kind of look at it there is a new little bit dimple a little bit look there that will capture the light uh, reflecting those shadows giving this figure a lot of depth and detail which is something that often lacks in a lot of the other things especially the more anime ones which are a lot more smoother uh, solid lines so seeing something so detailed like this from Tamashii Nations is fantastic and it really makes me want a full kind of medieval line um, even something that isn't as you based on a game like the figure we have here, we know it's called like knights and when you know pirates even, you know some bit more ground and reality uh, series just for some fun genetic figures I think it would be really cool because what they've done with this figure, I mean I want more of it personally. Uh, but yeah, that is what I think about finishing, it looks so good, uh, so let me know in the comments below what you think. And though it might be a little bit hard, there's one thing that kind of sticks out like dog's balls and that is the little wee hole on the foot here for the pivot. Kind of sticks out a little bit weird, it would have been nice if they could have covered that a little bit more. But it's um, a small gripe so far and otherwise an <laughs> absolutely beautiful figure. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, pop him off the turntable and get a look at that articulation. Okay, so starting with that head area, I mean basically looking at it, he's got the cape wrapped around and you'd think really no real articulation but he can swivel left, he can actually, uh, sorry, he can swivel right, uh, my left but it's right and then left, uh, he can go, can't really go back to be expected because he's got the uh, cloth cape already at the back, he can kind of, not really tilt forward either, the head is pretty limited but check this out, he has extra articulation which is kind of hidden underneath there which allows him to tilt forward on that upper arm area which is fantastic so his neck articulation is really good gives it a lot more range than what you would definitely expect uh, same for going left and you can kind of tilt it over to the other side as well so it has some nice pivot there um, and everything does move nicely I was really surprised by the extra tilt going forward that definitely saves the upper articulation for this figure which is otherwise pretty limited due to that shroll or uh, cape he has on there uh, but despite that you do get a nice amount of range though definitely more than what I was expecting now coming down to the shoulders he has his um, lots of pauldrons here uh, but this is on a peg and we can pop it off kind of easy so yeah, let's take it off now for a better look at that shoulder joint so if we can swivel this out and around we've got the usual butterfly joint uh, so we've got the inner arm there which again is beautifully detailed all the way around uh, so this will pivot forward and then we have the other joint on top and now everything on this figure feels super smooth um, and yeah it has a really nice range of motion so for that bicep swivel though, it appears the right one doesn't have it due to the arm design, but his left arm does have that bicep swivel there, which is nice. Uh, the cape will hinder the motion a little bit on that side, so that is something to keep in mind, but you can kind of swivel everything up and out of the way to get that arm movement coming around front without too much of a hindrance from the cape. But that is just something to keep in mind due to the design of the character. Um, it's not symmetrical or anything like that so there is some difference from left to right side for the articulation 
Now the actual elbow joints itself are really nice. Again, basically what you'd expect from a Tamashii figure in terms of the articulation there. Now moving down to the chest area. Um, as we saw earlier, we have the upper kind of neck area which will move. And then this main area here is all one piece of armor. Uh, we can see the different burn marks there. Um, but he can swivel on that hip joint without any issues. And there's a minimal amount of motion there. Just a little bit of back and forward tilting. It's a little bit hard to see, um, but it is pretty basic there. Then again, he is in a suit of armor, which probably isn't the most flexible in that area anyway to begin with. Now the detailing on his arm here, these are kind of a soft rubber, so they can move out of the way. Same with the chain mail here. Uh, so when you do move the legs, you can kind of push it up a little bit further than what you expect. And the overall splits is actually pretty decent considering all the extra design details we have around that hip area. Now here's the upper thigh swivel, which is nice, and his L, oh sorry, his knee joint is pretty straightforward as well. Uh, yeah, so going forward again, pretty nice. Going back is a little bit more limited, but he does have a decent amount of range there, will just get stuck on the armour. Now moving down to the feet here, we've got a little bit of time out of back tilt, but going forward is pretty nice. Um, but we do have a little bit of left and right pivot. Now that is why we do have that um, join, I guess, uh, I'm not sure what you call it, not really a peg, but the um, uh, dowel type thing there. At the back to hold the foot on to that joint. Uh, so it does give us a nice tilt action on our feet there, a bit more articulation which is nice which will make posing a bit easier. Though it does come with a downside of kind of sticking out a little bit too much on the back there. Now while the cape is one solid piece, we have seen already that it is pretty flexible and it doesn't hinder the articulation too much, you can kind of bend it up and out of the way if needed. Uh, so yeah, overall, despite the very detailed armour uh, with a lot of nooks, crannies and accessories attached to him, um, his articulation overall is actually really impressive for the figure design. Um, the main limitation is going to definitely be that head area though. So before we jump into that uh, polymer, I just want to quickly go over the uh, detailing again just as a real close up on the camera here to show those colours one more time because you can definitely see them coming through on the armour beautifully. Here we have like the uh, earthy red tones, that real blue colour from that super high heat melting the armour and it comes through super clear on that helmet there as well. Um, and then you know even on the polymers there we've got the more earthy colours and it goes again straight into that metallic -y metal colour. Uh, so yeah, the detailing, you know, even on the uh, cape with a tether of different colours, everything is beautiful in that regard. So now that we've had that close look and we've checked out our articulation, let's change some hands and pop on that wasp bear. Uh, so if you're new to the figures, when changing your hands, I recommend grabbing just on, just above the wrist, get the hand, make sure it's moving, and then just pull in a straight line. If you pull on an angle or push on an angle, that is when you risk breaking a peg. Um, so just pull in a straight line and they should pop right off. If you ever have a figure that is super tight and really hard to come off, just dip it in uh, some warm water for a little bit and then that will loosen up the plastic just enough for it to pop off without too much trouble. So there, just push on a straight line and we can see the new hand. And let's go for one of each type. Uh, so we can see the difference in the finger orientation. Let's pop this one on. There we go. Okay, so these are the two hand types. And as we can see here, the our fingers are curled with the thumb going straight up in a straight line whereas the other hand is orientated so it holds on it in an angle. So sometimes putting weapons on can be a little bit hard, sometimes you slot it in but for this one due to the design you just have to angle up with a gap between the fingers and just slot the pole arm through. And I've just realized I've actually put the 
wrong um, <laughs> uh, hands on and the wrong orientation so let's just switch those around now okay so I had it around the wrong way and um, I've switched the orientation for which way he's holding it because this hand is the flat one so that's gone on the bottom and then the other hand is facing up the other way with the with the spear pointing in a upwards direction now this could be the wrong way of holding it uh, but just for now just to showcase the two different hands and how you can mix and match them um, I think for most of the primary photos I've seen he just kind of holds the spear with one arm anyway so kind of holding it with two probably not the most natural look for this figure itself um, but just to make it a bit easier to hold on to while we put the effect on we'll leave it in this orientation and I'll definitely be showing a few photos um, posed in different ways holding the spear which you can check out at the end of this video as well as on Instagram so anyway let's take the effect slot this down which way is it I think maybe it doesn't really matter there we go okay that looks awesome he's holding it there definitely fiery um, and as I mentioned earlier very very top heavy uh, so you're definitely to kind of pose him in a way that will be able to balance while maintaining the extra weight okay so i think it's time for a little bit of pros and cons now i have not posed there with the war spear with that flame effect on and it is very heavy i've tried to give him a bit more of a pose matching one that was pretty badass on the box here and um, we can kind of there we go, you can kind of see him leaning in with the pom arm um, but when you put that flame effect on it's definitely a bit harder to maintain the pose so it's a bit more of a uh, <laughs> flimsy pose here so I do apologise but definitely check out the photos at the end um, but yeah overall though um, I think the pros is that finish that is so beautiful I'm just blown away by all those different colours there uh, the blue, the brown um, and all the kind of dimples and the look to the armor looks like he is a beaten warrior which is fantastic um, and then that flame effect is beautiful with the orange and yellow colors and even the scorch marks on the war spear itself and as he comes around we can see here as well again that tattered cape is fantastic um, articulation as well overall pretty good I think they've kind of blown this figure away my only con again is just a tiny peg Thing on her foot that's not even a big issue but it just it just sticks out and it kind of bugs me a little bit um, the articulation in the neck a little bit restricted that's uh, right the head part I should say not the neck because the neck does have a great articulation there but a little bit restricted a couple of points but to be honest it's with an expectation for the design uh, the weight balance with the heavy pom arm here or war spear that is a little bit annoying but to be expected it was the same with the SH Monster Arts Jet J from Godzilla SP beautiful weapon very hard to use and pose with a figure itself uh, so yeah overall no huge con it's a retail release it was uh, under 8,000 yen limited accessories in terms of hands and there's no additional head but hey, that's the design for his figure. He has his helmet, his melted helmet there, and that's all he needs. And see, so we get this badass weapon and flame effect, uh, which I think definitely brings the figure together. Uh, without that weapon, a little bit plain. Uh, so that is definitely what brings this figure to its perfected form here. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about this figure. If you're picking it up, if you played Elden Ring and you're buying it because of that, or if you haven't played the game like me and just want it because it looks like a badass kind of medieval uh, fighter. But yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, cheers.